The inspiration for this unusual trip came from the children of Happy Days and Special Times, the loving answer for children with cancer. It is this special group of children who live daring lives with courage and smiles, and what I call chutzpah, that boundless enthusiasm in facing the unknown. We can put couscous. That's too loud. Oh, I don't advise that either. Well, the leftover beans. Always a dilemma when you're camping. This footage is not a documentary of a trip, and certainly not an artwork, but only an accumulation of notes. What goes in our common knowledge about the world is what we say about it or what we show of it. All along, I tried to extend my own vision by seeing as others have said and by dreaming as others have drawn and by looking for what others have feared. Therefore, this film is made of a few different letters or answers to the children of happy days, the children who gave us drawings about Alaska prior to our departure, Louise's parents, my mother, Jean-Marie Moclet, everyone we met along the Yukon River, and everyone who supported the fundraising effort for happy days. Thank you so much. We welcome river travelers to this traditional fishing village. Our people inhabited this area for thousands of years and kept it pristine. Join us in this respect and help us to keep our land and water clean. May the spirits travel with you. In 1881, four prospectors ascended the Big Salmon River, which they called the Eon, after the Indian tribe found near the mouth. They were probably the first white men on the river, and they discovered gold on a nearby creek. By 1898, the Klondike Gold Rush was well underway. The old Indian fishing place at the confluence of the Big Salmon and Yukon Rivers had become a steamboat landing, a trading post, wood camp, and a small Indian settlement. It's a great big broad land way up yonder. It's a forest where silence has lease. It's a beauty that thrills me with wonder. It's a stillness that fills me with peace. Oh my God, this is great. Classic. There's John, zooming on John. Hello, John. I don't want to fall. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Oh, goodness. <sighs> you, then, you want a cigar? <laughs> the Yukon Project will get its marks from three different grounds. A fundraising effort for Happy Days and Special Times, a loving answer for children with cancer, a sportive event of three months, and an art project with children from two very opposite territories. Morel, most delicate mushroom, Minto, dustiest and thirstiest camp on the Yukon. Minto sits in the middle of a landscape scorched by last year's fire. Morels rise from the ashes of the scorched landscape of last year's fire. That's what morels do. And where there are morels, there are pickers from all over the world. Something like yet another gold rush. Today, 
we paddled our 10,000 strokes through this desolate, lunar, empty, silent landscape. But tonight, at the Minto campground, our dreams are made of morel gâteau, morel bits and shallot sauce, sautéed morels and leek omelet. Oh, mighty Yukon, thank you. <laughs> no toiletries for nine days. Are you staying another night? Yeah, we are leaving tomorrow morning. This must be fast, eh? Yeah, what's his cruise, eh? <laughs> Where are you going next to support soccer? Hey, you need a sail. Yeah, sail, yeah. It is our first day alone without Jean-Marie and John. I'm feeling overly sentimental, yet very excited. It was a nerve-wracking day as we got separated in a tricky area, which was appropriately called Hell's Gate. I got swept out of the main channel and into a maze of islands, and we reconnected a half an hour later. Then Fort Selkirk appeared out of nowhere on the opposite side of the river, high up on a bluff. The current was incredibly strong, and it was very difficult rowing to get to it. Oh, le fromage. Oh, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Fort Selkirk is a truly amazing spot on the Yukon, high up on a bank. We walked around the old town and discovered 40 buildings still standing. No gift shops, no neon, no New Yorkers, and no admission. It is as it is, standing for itself on a wide, windy plateau. my host. Check it. Is this my... Can't see. It looks like see or see something donations. First Nation stories describe Fort Selkirk as an exciting place where families were raised, where friendships were renewed after food gathering trips where the people danced and gambled. In the early 1950s, when the riverboat stopped running, the residents packed up and moved to places situated along the newly constructed Klondike Highway. Yeah, that's amazing.
The graves are surrounded by colorful wooden posts, almost resembling bedposts, which makes sense after all, resting for the big final dirt nap. I'm thinking a lot about life and death on this journey. You are telling us all kind of stories about the ice. Oh yeah, okay. When the Yukon River is frozen in the winter, and in, and when it starts to freeze, it looks like little saucers. Little saucers float down the river, and they keep building up. And then you got ice, and the ice raises. The water raises about three or four feet. And then the ice drops down again. And then the water goes over top, and then you can go skidooing on it. It freezes about four feet, and you go skidooing. And then here, it'll start cracking and heaving. The water comes up. And like if what caused the water coming up down river, it breaks up earlier or two, and then it jams the water, so the ice comes up here. And then all of a sudden, it cracks open, and then it goes. The water goes, and you see great big hunks and small pieces. And, and then when most of it's gone, and bigger ones come from upriver, and then they pile up on the banks here. Some places there's icebergs about six, seven feet high, and it's, they go into the bank. And A guy in the winter used to drop me food out of an airplane, and it hit the snow. He tried in the summertime, but then I had groceries all over the place. It's 11.15 or 11.30 at night. Polish sausage night! It's the second island, or if not the third island, that we have stopped hoping to be able to camp there. But we found some uh, moose prints and bear prints on the other ones. So this one has moose prints, we don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> When you set the trap. Yeah. A little mink comes along, or a little squirrel, or a rabbit, or. Woo! Got it. Right. Nice things here. These were. <coughs> oh. Dishwasher, or clothes washers, I mean. Oh my gosh. Look at that. An old time clothes washer. Deep. That's what we don't want to run into mm -hmm. <laughs> at any time. I think this is an old gold scale. Oh, the old, oh, the old snowshoes. You want the other side too? Yeah. Oh, look at the old snowshoes. Oh, wow. Those are mastodon um, tusks. Woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoth. That's uh, birch bark, and these are spruce roots. Oh, then they they, they peel the peel the spruce roots and use it for mm. lacing. Gosh, fantastic! And this is the same way they built birch bark canoes. Same same same, same yeah. bark, same thickness. Same thickness. Yeah, mm -hmm. about the same thickness. Yeah. Yeah. Those saws up there were the wooden frames. They call those buck saws. Oh, these right here. Yeah. For cutting firewood. Mm. Mm. Those are candle holders. Oh. Used to jab them in the log or a wall or whatever. And oh, shine five cents. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and uh, the whole country depended on steamboat transportation because there was no roads into the uh, into the Yukon prior to the building of the Alaska Highway, and uh, the steamboats were the only means of transportation in the Yukon. I was a fireman on one in 1942, and uh, we burned uh, 1,800 cords of wood, of uh, which I burned 600 personally, as there were three firemen on the boat. Mm -hmm. A very elegant uh, tourist boats and uh, they used to haul all kinds of passengers and families and, and food and bring to bring to oh, the people living they had, here. They or? had wonderful uh, cuisine on board. Uh, the, uh, 
The menus were quite elegant, and it was all loaded by hand with with hand. We met some very interesting people, especially these two, these two ladies <laughs> we're, we're, we're with right now. We're sitting in the cabin on Stewart Island, mm -hmm. where I lived in my young years and where my, my people were here. We had a roadhouse. And uh, I've walked around the familiar trails, although there isn't much left. I've been away for so many years. But st it's still a thrill to be back in the north. Like one of our friends said, who was born in the north, you know, she said, when I cross that B.C. border into the Yukon, I feel like getting down and kissing the ground. Oh, <laughs> oh that's great. And that's how I feel. Hmm. Okay? Yeah. Can you talk about also the cemetery and, uh, oh. and the, what's happening here and where you found it? Well, this island is, is being washed away sometimes at 20 feet in the spring with the big, with the ice break up and the high water and whatnot. And, uh, <coughs> The cemetery apparently went in the river seven years ago, along with my mother mm. or so. What's done is done, mm. you know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> There's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow here in the Yukon, and we found it at Stewart Island. One of the last residents of Stewart Island wanted to be buried up in a tree according to traditional Indian custom. Upon her death, she was cremated and rests in a tin can in the crook of a tree with a small plaque. I see, then I think. Because I see, then I think. Because I think a thing I can do. Because it is clear. Yes. Sky? Blue. Because if it falls, we will be dead. Okay. Okay, maybe we can put a stone. Too late. water supply is in this bottle and we have 30 miles to paddle tomorrow it's a close-up <laughs> oh great maybe you can get the cold sore on my lip too i don't know if the video will get that but oh Ghislaine, i'm trying don't don't try very hard oh i'm having a terrible You're so photogenic i'm having a terrible time on the union <laughs> i hate it <laughs> <laughs> I'm dirty and my fingernails are broken and I have a cut there and blister here and more blisters here. I have mosquito bites here.
kind of last bit, but that looks neat, that bit. Miller coming to you live from Dawson City. It's, it's Canada, Canada Day here in Dawson City. Hello to everyone back there in Carolina. This is what you look like after three months. <laughs> He's still alive and well. Yes. It's midnight here in Dawson. <laughs> For a brief and romantic period at the turn of the century, Dawson was the largest city west of Winnipeg and north of San Francisco, boasting a population of 30,000. Gold dust was more plentiful than snow, whiskey flowed faster than the Yukon, and with the bar on every corner and legendary ladies like Klondike Kate, Dawson was the good time capital of North America. Forty miles. It's at the corner of the 40 mile waivers and the Yukon wave. Birds gonna continue this all night long, huh? Forty Mile was named for its distance from Fort Reliance, which was the site of a trading post six miles below Dawson. Forty Mile came into existence after the discovery of gold in 1886. By 1890, the population was listed as 238, rising to 324 in 1892. At its peak, Forty Mile hosted 80 to 150 log cabins a barber shop, roadhouse, Anglican church, blacksmith shop, two bakeries, two restaurants, two hotels, several saloons, a billiard parlor, a theater, and the McQuesten and Company store. Yeah, like this, this door is new. Yeah? The bear, oh, okay. the bear ate the door, the old door, up to here. And Jeez. just left this bottom half. And so two weeks ago when we came down, we rebuilt this door. And we put this thing across so we can't oh. get it, pull it open. Yeah. What is that thing on, on top of your... Uh, oh. That ropes? What that is, is our uh, antenna, oh. our radio. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the rope, we hang our solar panel from it. Oh, right. And our solar panel faces the south. It has to be up high because the in the winter in the short days the sun doesn't come up over the horizon oh yeah so we hang it up high so it gets a little bit of sun oh. and it charges up our batteries for our radio oh she's doing great yeah she seems to be having a wonderful time and, and uh 
uh, doing lots of filming, and in fact, she's filming right now. She's filming, she has her video camera out, and she, we just got to Eagle, Alaska. Well, yeah, we're here with some Germans, two Swiss boys, two British boys, and, oh, and Mama, I have to tell you that I cooked, I cooked your curry fruit recipe. Hello, my name's Richard, and I'm from England. Uh, myself and my friend Bob, we're, we've done 600 miles. Yay! <laughs> uh, the purpose of the trip was um, for two reasons, to have an adventure, obviously, but um, we're also trying to raise money for leukemia research um, for our charity back in England. And um, we've got a, a little school that's following us back in England, and all the children are following our progress all the way down the down the river. Yeah, Grandma's doing some mending. The shop is open for repairs. To look at Louis, which for the first time has a head net because this place is invaded by mosquito. They're this hell. They're hell, and they even welcomed us at midnight yet last night. They like our flesh. Moose droppings. That's a monster of a dredge. The Coal Creek dredge is a four cubic foot bucket dredge that was constructed by the Walter W. Johnson Company of Oakland in 1934. The dredge was knocked down, crated, and shipped to Coal Creek via Skagway and the White Pass and Yukon Railroad and the company's Yukon River steamboats. The dredge was reassembled in its own pond five miles up the creek in the summer of 1935. When last operated in 1975, it was a mile from the Yukon River. The dredge, powered by a diesel motor, moved slowly up and down the creek, raising and lowering its buckets. That's a nugget. Look at that. Wow. Well, oh, Richard, can you pick it up? Yep. Maybe there's some more in there. Yeah, this is a nice panel. Oh, 50-50, right? Oh, Richard? Oops. <laughs> I got nine and he got ten.
and we didn't make no big strikes, but it was fun. Bye bye. Boy, what a big adventure to get to go, you know, all those different places. And yeah, I think you're gonna. I think the fact that you're invited to you know, visit them in Fort Yukon, I'd make it a point to do oh, that because yeah, definitely. that's you know that's a, that's gonna be a real village. Yeah. My name's Joseph. Uh, I'm a park ranger here at Yukon Charlie Rivers. I live in Eagle. About two days out of 15, and I spend the rest of the time on the river at Cold Creek Camp or at Slavens. Take care of the public use cabins and help people out and taxi drive up and down the Yukon for the resource managers, and educational programs, things like that. This is the law of the Yukon, and ever she makes it plain. Send not your foolish and feeble, send me your strong and your sane. Strong for the red wage of battle, sane for I harry them sore. Runs real good. Let me kick the motor up for me, would you please? Yeah. Yeah, I figured if I get some of the stuff put up today, it won't be such buffers. That wasn't a very nice place to party. I think maybe because it cooled off and it, the air gets heavy when it's cool. Oh, oh yeah. Kinda... <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, uh, Look forward to hearing from you guys. It's so winter. Gas, write us yeah. letters and we'll write you back uh, and gas, we'll exchange yeah. pictures and have a good time. Thank you very much. Okay. The church is the local radio station broadcasting to God direct from Circle, Alaska. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Hi. What? <laughs> Where do you where do you live? 
Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've seen a couple of moose so far on the trip. Yep. <laughs> They're just teasing me. <laughs> They're not worried about the back Got a bit a few times, look like. I go like that. Oh. Hair croak. <laughs> the mosquitoes got you, huh? They get everybody. Come. <laughs> Close. Yes, it's beautiful. Right? Oh, well, sure. yeah, sure. Smile, baby. Let's right? give her a good smile. <laughs> smile, baby. Smile, oh, smile, baby. Oh, yeah. oh, Boy. You got a voice yeah, machine on that, too, right? Yes. Yeah. I thought it meant, how are you? <laughs> no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> you look great, no. all of them. <laughs> It is incredibly flat, flat, flat. It is a continual labyrinth of islands. We have no idea how far we've paddled or where in the world we are, but we are determined to get to Fort Yukon tonight. It looks weird. We have to do that piece again. The sound was not connecting, I guess. <laughs> and but anyway, this That's is the first nice. view we had from Fort Yukon. And the only thing we want to tell you is that we are so happy we to be in Fort Yukon. Fort here. Yukon <laughs> above the Arctic Circle. Oh la vache. Oh la vache. C'est formidable. Louise is preparing some food. Yes, we are having a very festive welcome dinner. We have crossed about a third of the Yukon Flats that oh we were supposed to do. Oh my god, I'm on do. film! Call 911. The Yukon Flats, everybody told us, well, the current is going to go down, you will have to paddle crazy. You're going to die. And you are going to die and get lost. So well, we didn't have any maps. Okay. Um, we didn't know where the hell we were really going, but we followed the current and our intuition. And we're here. So all you people who doubted us, <laughs> to hell with you. <laughs> As you can see, the tent preparations are a little slow. Well, to the people of South Carolina, Charleston, I like to say anytime you're in Alaska, come to Fort Yukon. It's eight miles above the Arctic Circle. And this is a lodge owned by my mom and my father. And um, you're always welcome. <laughs> I'm a full-blooded Athabascan Indian with a Hawaiian t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> my dad is uh, originally from North Carolina and Cherokee, uh, Cherokee County. or cuddly Lion King, this time there's a far less handsome star, but he is backed up by tunes from... 
These are fish that we dry for the dogs uh -huh. to feed them in the winter time. Uh -huh. So those are, that salmon or that, those are... These are white fish here. White fish. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we watched a film this morning that they sent up with our oh. family. We played that together. Hey. My brother got oh. Dad, when are we going to go fishing? Pretty you know. I never knew. Skull cap to a Woodslands bison possibly was in Alaska as recent as 800 years ago. In the oral history of the native people, they still talk about hunting Woodslands bison. And normally, oral history rarely survives more than 600 years. Oral history is, is, is not very old and still exist uh, the tales of hunting bison. So they had to be here very recent. All the timber that is in the flats here is all recent growth. We, we, don't, we have very young forests. This was all a bottom of a riverbed, a uh, lake bed at one time. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello, I hope you enjoy your taste. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's oh, it's wonderful. On our way back from town, we got a ride from a local policeman who drove an old blue truck. We had a dripping bag of ice and a big bag of groceries. I guess only crazy chichacos like us buy ice. Here we are in Alaska in the Arctic Circle, somewhere near the Arctic Circle. And we're eating um, salmon in a lemon uh, butter dill sauce. Not a grizzly bear. And not a big one. But big enough to be alone. Is going to be able to see us. Pardon? Are you ready for a horrible noise? Yes. Oh, that's what they are like. 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 Oh, that's what they are like.
we're gonna die on the Yukon Flats. So what, Louise? <laughs> we're alive. We've weathered the wind rainstorm of the Yukon Flats. Colleen's tent is trashed. I hope she doesn't snore. Uh... <laughs> ah, call 911. Hi, my name is Britta Salai and I'm from Beaver, Alaska, and I'm in San Francisco. Hello. 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 Hi. Uh -huh. Bikini. <laughs> hey, yo. And the best thing I like in school is, um, gymnastics. Gym activity. Math. She's yeah. running after me. <laughs> <laughs> oh good, get Galena on film because well, no. because because she's always the one with the camera. <laughs> and we don't have many pictures of Galena. <laughs> she's on film. We've captured her. I captured her. Barbara got her you on film. <laughs> yeah. How many miles do you end up doing in one day? It depends on the wind. Uh, we can, we did up to 50 miles, I guess, one day. It yeah. Um, yeah. I'm afraid the wind is coming back, though, wow. and we, I don't like wow. very much wind on the wow. river. <laughs> and Barbara is a cameraman. Uh, he's a born cameraman. Okay. Born cameraman. Uh huh. Camera woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> Indians did not set out to create art for its own sake. In traditional Indian thinking, there is no separation between art and life or between what is beautiful and what is functional. Art, beauty, and spirituality are so firmly intertwined in the routine of living that no words are needed or allowed to separate them. There is no Indian equivalent to our word religion. Wild and wider are my borders, stern as death is my sway. From my ruthless throne I have ruled alone for a million years and a day.
It's the myriad spectrum of water sounds, the hissing of silt through the raft floor, the drips off the oars, the gurgle of streams. It's the pelting of rain, even the suctioning sound of pulling our feet out of the pluff mud. It is all very seductive, hypnotic, and free. It will last forever. Endless desolation, pointless discipline, the same motion over and over, and you have nothing to show for it. Wild and wide are my borders, stern as death is my sway. And I wait for the men who will win me, and I will not be won in a day. This is the law of the Yukon. Paddling, watching, reading, filming, an ideal situation to think of a work that acknowledges the difference between lived experience and representation, or beauty and mud.
Rainbow. <laughs> Just a soup song for your dining enjoyment. Pour me double. Excellent. The end of the flats. Silver boat. And it's my dog Nugget. Come on, you're gonna take Nugget. Her right back. Look at her. High five. High five. High five. Yeah. Good boy. I'm Robert Bowser. I work for Bureau of Land Management at the contact station at the Yukon River. Oh, wow. That's uh, we're here three months. That's and we tell visitors what the condition like of the highway the is, the where the best fishing the is, and we leave in September and go back to Florida for the winter. Okay, I'm running the tour boat for Stevens Village. We're running six miles upriver to a fish camp. Sometimes they call me Yukon Jack. <laughs> I still have yet to taste some. I do not want to own you, or possess you, nor conquer you, for you cannot be conquered. You are magical, infinitely more powerful than I, in your beauty, intensity, and sheer force. It's an abandoned fishing camp. There's a name. What? There's a name. Oh. Elsie Pitka. She's making the point. These are four packages of grits. Galen's porridge. Mm. Porridge is too hot. Is it? Mmm.